Hey everybody, today's review is going to be on the Eka Suite 8. This is a Swedish uh, manufactured knife. Um, Eka Sweden, they've been in a business for quite a while. I uh, believe it says 1882. Um, so this is pretty much what you get when you order. It comes in the much dreaded clam packaging, which uh, you have to use a knife to get open, ironically. Um, you get the knife this pretty much bulletproof uh, nylon sheath which is really awesome I'll go more into detail about this in a second and you also get this it's it's a lanyard it's uh, it's not the best it's really thin sort of just string but um it'll get the job done if you really want to it has a looks like a little s clip right there on the end to go here um this knife online it wasn't exactly advertised as such um the pictures they had was this knife but it didn't have this uh, this portion here for the lanyard and uh, it was also advertised with sort of torque screws instead of the flatheads for the overall uh, pivot adjustment and also back here for I guess to hold the, the backspacer in but um this knife is really awesome let's go into some of the technical specs here on the clamp packaging the blade is made of Sandvik 12C27, very good stuff, uh, that's pretty much a typical steel on a, a lot of European knives for stainless. It's hardened to 57 to 59. Uh, you can get this with either the ProFlex handle, which I have here. It's sort of a, a rubbery plastic, but it has very good traction, I like it a lot. Um, let's see what else we got here. Blade length is 80 millimeters or 3.15 inches. Blade thickness is 2.8 millimeters or 0.11 inches. Total length is 185 millimeters or 7.28 inches. Closed length is 104 millimeters or 4.09 inches. Total weight in grams is 100 grams or 3.5 ounces. So. It's a very light knife, however, this is probably the sturdiest uh, lockback knife I've come across. Um, it was it really came down to this or the Buck 112, but I've heard about the uh, sort of decline in quality over the years for Buck, so I wanted to just be really sure that what I spend my money on is something that's going to last me a long time and not need a bit of work right out the box, you know. Um, overall fit and finish on this guy is pretty amazing. Um, Blade centering was spot on. Get a little bit of a close up on that. I don't know if you can see it. It's pretty good. Um, the only issue I had was right here. I don't know if you could see it, but where the uh, the back spring and the sort of back spacer here, they're not flush. It's sort of sloped this way. I don't know if you can pick that up. Yeah, he can. But um, it doesn't affect the overall lockup of the knife. I mean, just listen to this pretty uh pretty loud lockup um zero side to side zero up and down blade play um there's a lot of reviewers actually that'll say a little bit of lock rock on a lockback knife is to be expected regardless of the price point but i think it's actually unacceptable uh this knife was about 30 dollars shipped but i mean i've seen people complain about it on like a $40 buck 110 or 112 and uh, I've even seen people talk about it on like a K-Bar Dozer and uh, even more expensive knives they're like yeah it's to be expected but it's actually quite unacceptable if uh, the the blade has lock rock uh, that means either the design is terrible or there's some manufacturing issues uh, neither of which is the case with this knife um, I really like the handle because the uh, the ProFlex material is very nice and grippy, so even if your hand's wet, you're going to be able to hold on to it really well. Um, also, the overall uh, shape of the handle is pretty much perfect. You can see it kind of kind of goes like this. It's like a, a slight hook on the end there. And there's a cutoff for the first finger, which locks you in pretty well. And then there's also the uh, the sort of bigger cutout for the rest of your fingers. And there's some pretty sharp jimping on the the spine of the blade uh it's not sharp that you'll you'll really hurt yourself or anything but it's sharp enough that your finger doesn't really want to move at all on that which is pretty nice um upon closer inspection you'd be forgiven for thinking this uh knife has no metal liners but the sort of 
plastic ProFlex overmold goes over the the liners. You can kind of pick it up there. So the liners themselves aren't exposed, so you get just a really comfortable handle. And um, especially in the colder months, when uh, that just exposed metal would be freezing and hard to use if you're not wearing gloves, this is going to be uh, pretty much a usable temperature if uh, you're not wearing gloves and it's cold out. Um, now onto the sheath. The sheath is incredibly stiff when you get out the box. Um, this whole back section here, it feels kind of like a cardboard. It's It doesn't want to give it all this way. Uh, you could bend it ever so slightly at the top here. The, the belt loop here is just a solid piece of plastic. Incredibly solid. I have no doubt whatsoever that this sheath is going to hold up quite well over the years. Um, it's pretty big too. You could fit like an inch and a half or two inch belt through there. No problem. Um, this sheath is also perfect for another one of my favorite knives, a uh, Victorinox Spartan Light. It's uh, three and a half inches or you know 91 millimeters, and it fits this sheath perfectly. Let's uh, try and do this one-handed. Sorry. Uh, yeah, as you can see, it fits perfectly. Zero rattle whatsoever. Uh, it goes all the way to the bottom. Um, and then I just attached a, a simple lanyard to this to be able to get it out the sheath uh, comfortably and easy. There we go. Uh, this knife, however, just barely goes into here. Like it's it's incredibly it's an incredibly tight fit. So if I was going to carry this knife, I would uh, just try stretching out the sheath a little bit by putting something like this in there for a while just to stretch it out, or uh, even maybe a slightly larger knife than than this one. But uh, it's really solid. It, it sits well on the belt. And again, I have no doubt this thing is going to hold up for, for quite a while. Um, another thing I like, too, is that since these are flatheads, you can use uh, you know, the, uh, the flathead on your Swiss Army to disassemble the knife for cleaning. Or uh, you're out in the field, you need to adjust the pivot because it got loose or whatever. You can totally do that. It's a nice little combination there. Uh, what else? The blade wasn't particularly sharp out of the box, which, again, it's, it's kind of one of those things where you're either fine with it or you're not. Um, I'm sort of not fine with that. But at the same time, it's it's a good steel. I know it'll take a good edge. I know it'll keep a good edge for a long time. But the fact that it wasn't really sharp out of the box was kind of disappointing. Um, the only part that was really sharp at all was uh, the belly right here. I was able to shave a couple hairs off with that. But otherwise, not really sharp. Um, overall blade design, I really like. It has a, a nice bit of belly. Um, kind of reminiscent of a buck. But just a really well thought out knife. I really like it. And being at about three and a half ounces, you know, you really won't feel this. It's just like a, a lot of your normal EDC items. Kind of like, you know, the Swiss Army. A little bit heavier than that, actually. But, um... Another thing I did to this one was I put one of these quick thumb thumb studs. It's an aftermarket part you can get online. Got this one from Amazon. And you could just attach it to the spine of any folding knife. And it gives you something to, to push up on the blade with. So you can employ it with one hand. I'll show you what that looks like real quick. Alright, smooth, nice and easy. Another thing too, the uh, the blade action on this is is pretty smooth for for a lockback. Um, something like a K bar dozer would uh, be a little quicker to deploy just just by design, but this one is pretty smooth all the way through. You don't have any uh, any grittiness. Um, just a really awesome knife. I'm really glad I got this one. Um, the Swede 10 is just a little bit bigger than this one actually. I almost got that one, but it. After having this one in my hand, I know that the, the 10 would be a little bit too big for uh, for general EDC. But if you're out in the woods a lot, uh, you know, you like to, to bushcraft or you hunt small animals, uh, that one might be a little bit better for those kind of things. Um, let's see, I forgot to mention it has a, uh, a hollow grind on it. So, yeah, there you go. 
Yeah. Uh, only only thing about this knife is just be ready to sharpen it out of the box. But I mean, overall quality of this knife is outstanding. Uh, I really really like this knife. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Um, yeah, go get you one. Uh, they they make a lot of other knives too. They, as I said, they have the this is the eight. They have the ten, which is just a little bit bigger than this. They have the nine, which has a, a clip point and a Scandi grind on it, which is pretty cool. I might check that one out out at a later time. But um, yeah, for general EDC, this would be a pretty awesome knife to carry. All right, so hope you guys enjoyed the review. Like always, have a good one.